Risk Management of Commercial Property We all know property can be classified in a number of ways, including its mobility, use value and ownership. Sometimes these varying characteristics affect potential losses, which in turn affect decisions about which risk management options work best. In this lesson, we will study types of property coverage and determination of payments, e-commerce property risk, risk management of e-commerce, and global risk management. After going through this presentation, you should be able to discuss the general property coverage, explain the types of property coverage and determination of payments, describe the e-commerce property risk, discuss the causes of loss in e-commerce, and explain the risk management of e-commerce and global risk management. When there is a direct physical loss, insurance coverage for business interruption is more likely to exist than when the interruption is not from direct physical loss. Non-related causes of loss that affect the continued viability of businesses usually do not have insurance remedies. A key problem in these cases would be lack of insurance coverage. Physical damage depends on the policy. Most small and mid-sized business organizations have commercial policies based on standard forms developed by the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India IRDA. Larger companies often have custom written manuscript policies that may not be so restrictive. Whatever the wording is, it is likely to be debated in court. No region of the world is safe from environmental catastrophes. Floods, flash floods and earthquakes, the most common of all natural disasters, occur in every country. Some countries are vulnerable to earthquakes whereas some are vulnerable to cyclones, tsunamis, tornadoes, volcanic eruptions, etc. Valuation Clause The intent of insurance is to indemnify an insured. Payment on an actual cash value basis is most consistent with the indemnity principle. Yet, the deduction of depreciation can be both severe and misunderstood. In response, property insurers often offer coverage on a replacement cost new basis RCN which does not deduct depreciation in valuing the loss rather replacement cost a deductible requires the insured to bear some portion of a loss before the insurer is obligated to make any payment the purpose of deductibles is to reduce cost for the insurer thus making lower premiums possible the most common forms of deductibles in property insurance are a straight deductible requires payment for all losses less than a specified dollar amount. A franchisee deductible is similar to a straight deductible except that once the amount of loss equals the deductible the entire loss is paid in full. The disappearing deductible is a modification of the franchisee deductible. Instead of having one cutoff point beyond which losses are paid in full, a disappearing deductible is a deductible whose amount decreases as the amount of the loss increases. A coinsurance clause has two main provisions. First, it requires you to carry an amount of insurance equal to a specified percentage of the value of the property if you wish to be paid the amount of loss you incur in full. And second, it stipulates a proportional payment of loss for failure to carry sufficient insurance. It makes sense that if insurance coverage is less than the value of the property, losses will not be paid in full because the premiums charged are for lower values. Almost every home, family and business has risk exposures because of the use of computers, the internet and the web. We refer to this as e-commerce property risk. There are many additional risk exposures from electronic business, both to you as an individual and to business. Businesses with a web presence are those that offer professional services online and or online purchasing. 
Some businesses are business to consumer (BTC). Others are business to business (BTB). Regardless of the nature of the use of the internet, cyber attacks have become more frequent and have resulted in large financial losses. Businesses today are becoming aware of their e-commerce risk exposures in every forum of insurance meetings and in every insurance media. E-risk exposure is discussed as one of the major less understood risk exposures. Companies have rapidly become dependent on computers. When a company computer system is down, regardless of the cause, the company risks losing weeks, months, or possibly years of data. Losses from theft of proprietary information, sabotage of data networks, or telecom eavesdropping can cause major losses to the infrastructure base of a business, whether it is done by outside hackers or by insider. Disgruntled employees. Another risk companies face in the cyber world is the rapid advancement of technology. When a company updates its computer system, its software package, or the process for conducting business using the computer system, business is interrupted while employees learn how to conduct business using the new system. The result of this downtime is lost revenue. Almost as quickly as the internet is growing, the government is adding and changing applicable e-commerce laws. In the past, there were few laws because the internet was not fully explored nor fully understood. But now, laws and regulations are mounting. Thus, companies engaged in e-commerce face legal risk arising from governmental involvement. Domain name disputes are a serious concern for many businesses. In most cases, disputes over the rights to a domain name result from two specific events. Domain name hijacking occurs when an individual or a business reserves a domain name that uses the trademark of a competitor. One of the fastest-growing communication technologies is the internet-based telephony, known as Voice Over Internet Protocol (VoIP). Businesses can take loss control steps to reduce the e-commerce property and business interruption risk by using the security products and processes, system audits, and antivirus protection. Businesses today buy electronic security systems and develop many steps to reduce the risk of data and hardware losses. Firms conduct regular system audits to test for breaches in network security. Traditional property insurance covers physical damage to tangible property due to an insured peril. Electronic data can be considered property in most instances, but standard commercial insurance policies contain exclusions that explicitly invalidate coverage for exposures in relation to the use of technology. Under this endorsement, insurers will pay for the cost to replace or restore electronic data. Which has suffered loss or damage by a covered cause of loss, including the cost of data entry, reprogramming, and computer consultation services. The climate around the world has changed with the war in Iraq, a part of the world surrounded by major economic and political hotspots. Political risk can be defined as unanticipated political events that disrupt the earning or profit-making ability of an enterprise. According to the risk report, the nature of the risk has changed. Twenty years ago, the major risk was in the area of nationalization of capital assets, while the perils of today are more related to economic integration and the power of international financial markets. Although the legal environment may have been carefully reviewed from the standpoint of firm operations. Little information may have been obtained about insurance requirements and regulations. Admitted insurance is written by companies authorized to write insurance in the country where a risk exposure is located. Another problem facing the international risk manager is the collection of adequate statistical information. Economic and statistical data commonly available in the United States may simply be non-existent in other parts of the world. Data may also be grossly distorted for political reasons. 
officially stated inflation rates, for instance, are notoriously suspect in many countries. Data collection and analysis are a problem not only in this broad sense. Currency exchange risk is in the area of liquidity and convertibility between currencies. The risk exposure is the inability of the global firm to exchange the currency and transfer out of hostile countries. Labor laws reflect another interesting cultural difference. The steps in global risk management include processes to reduce risk and develop loss control policies along with obtaining the appropriate insurance. The steps include learning the culture of the country and becoming a good corporate citizen, learning about the reality of the country and finding ways to avoid political and legal traps. In the area of insurance, the global firm first looks for public insurance policies. The U.S. government established an insurance program administered through the Overseas Private Investment Corporation, OPIC, in 1948. The types of coverage available include expropriation, confiscation, war risk, and civil strife, unfair calling of guarantees, contract repudiation and currency inconvertibility. OPIC insurance is available only in limited amounts and only in certain developing countries that have signed bilateral trade agreements with the United States for projects intended to aid development. Some private insurers, however, also provide political risk insurance. Private insurers do not have the same restrictions as OPIC but country limits do exist to avoid catastrophe, dependent exposure units. The private insurance market's ability to meet the demand has been strengthening each year because customers require broader coverage with longer terms, up to 10 years. Other companies expanding into the market are Bermuda's Sovereign Risk, AIG and Reliance among others. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. When there is a direct physical loss, insurance coverage for business interruption is more likely to exist than when the interruption is not from direct physical loss. Right or wrong? Right. Firms conduct regular system process to test for breaches in network security. Right or wrong? Wrong. Political risk can be defined as unanticipated political events that disrupt the earning or profit-making ability of an enterprise. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. When there is a direct physical loss, insurance coverage for business interruption is more likely to exist than when the interruption is not from direct physical loss. Non-related causes of loss that affect the continued viability of businesses usually do not have insurance remedies. Valuation Clause The intent of insurance is to indemnify an insured. Payment on an actual cash value basis is most consistent with the indemnity principle. A franchisee deductible is similar to a straight deductible except that once the amount of loss equals the deductible, the entire loss is paid in full. Domain name disputes are a serious concern for many businesses. In most cases, disputes over the rights to domain name result from two specific events. Domain name hijacking occurs when an individual or a business reserves a domain name that uses the trademark of a competitor. Businesses can take loss control steps to reduce the e-commerce property and business interruption risk by using the security products and processes, system audits and antivirus protection. Traditional property insurance covers physical damage to tangible property due to an insured peril. The risk exposure is the inability of the global firm to exchange the currency and transfer it out of hostile countries. Labor laws reflect another interesting cultural difference. The steps in global risk management include processes to reduce risk and develop loss control policies along with obtaining the appropriate insurance. 
The steps include learning the culture of the country and becoming a good corporate citizen, learning about the reality of the country and finding ways to avoid political and legal traps. In the area of insurance, the global firm first looks for public insurance policies.